Hello, this is a Steinway Upright Piano OV 1938, 123 centimetres high. And uh, as I say, it's just arrived in stock. I'm just assessing it here to uh, see what work needs doing. Uh, first thing we can notice here is that the key tops, uh, they, they're all there, but they they've been replaced some of them this is a different one here and the line is very strong here when when they're replaced you have to be, it's really hard to get that line to, to disappear altogether uh, hopefully we can do a bit better than that so either we try to make better the key tops sell the piano cheap is another possibility or uh, we can replace the key tops with with plastics um, difficult to decide because it's nice to keep ivories if you can but uh, they do look slightly patchy i would have said now the case where it's scratched um, in places is uh, typical wear and tear really and the top here as you can see I think we can disguise most of that we can also repolish the whole piano it obviously makes it a lot more expensive if we do that it's a rather nice front panel here I think that's original too so the whole thing's original and uh, I say in, in generally good condition in terms of no veneer missing but uh, it could do with tidying up at least if not repolishing altogether. I think the piano has been kept open because if we close the lid down you can see the original colour and slightly different, f slightly differently fading here and <coughs> not faded there where it's been kept back like this. So that's typically common. If you have a piano it's a good idea to vary like that so it doesn't fade unevenly. Now when assessing a piano the first thing is the tone and it's, it's excellent throughout. The hammers are good, perhaps a bit weak there, I think we need to reface them there and that will bring the strength back in, uh, no problem with that. It's just that they used a bit more in that region. Uh, but generally the tone, nice and full, just as it should be. Um, the action, it needs regulating, see that there's a, some lost motion there. That's, that's easy, if you're a player, then you can pick that up straight away. Um, so that's, uh, but the tapes here are also beginning to go. So I think we need a new set of tapes. There's a tape here that's um, just been put on, temp what we call temporary tapes. Um, you could arguably just replace a few of them if you want to economise, uh, but replacing all the tapes is what we would normally do, and then we can lubricate the action at the same time once the tapes are off. This is a standard action, by the way, not like the older Steinway uprights, uh, so that's, that's good news. And now, the main thing that I really don't like at all is the key dip which is uh, down to, that's a key dip measure, 11 millimetres. I say that was about nine millimetres or even less uh, and really isn't enough key dip to get a nice touch, um, particularly what we call after touch. Uh, as you play the notes, the hammer coming back, it just about got after touch on the sharps and the naturals, but it just doesn't feel right. Key dip normally is expected to be 10 or even 11 millimetres. This is a top quality Kawhi, so it really it's even got a soundboard, this, this, key, this keyboard. You see that uh, uh, that's, even, that's an 11 millimetre key dip and it goes below that, so it's even almost 12 millimetres. Uh, most keyboards, or all keyboards, are 11 at least, and this one goes down to 12 millimetres. Here's a blue to the ground with 11 millimetres key dip, so that would be normally setting it out. So the sharps on this Steinway will also need to go down a bit more. Uh, you don't want your finger to be touching the white keys though, so they're going to go another millimetre at least. A touch is weighed off here at about 40 grams, uh, which is too light for serious study, uh, but a lot of people like a lighter weight piano, including pianists, so um, if you're not studying seriously, just like, in like a light touch, then that's ideal. It's, very, it's a very good up weight. And the up weight's less than 20 grams, so that's ideal. These, by the way, one pound is 9.5 grams, so uh, it's about 18 grams, which is uh, just about right for a very nice touch. I forgot to mention that we tested the tuning pins, obviously that's really important, but you wouldn't expect them to be loose on a 1930 uh, Steinway, and uh, indeed they are. In fact, they're so stable, these pianos, that they're more stable than a modern piano, much more stable. So if you're buying a Steinway this age, it should be pretty you're confident that it's going to remain in tune. Two beats below concert pitch, not been tuned for some time, so uh, that's the reason for that. So that's a Steinway Model V 1938, just coming to stock, and it's really an excellent piano in very good condition. The touch though is the worst thing that lets you down because not only because the key dip is a bit shallow but also because uh, there's a bit of play on the keys. Uh, it's not working properly as a double bounce so that really needs sorting out as the number one job to do. And now the, the strings, the, ha the tuning pins, everything is in very good condition. But um, what we've got to think about, do we change these key tops? Um, and uh, if you want to buy this piano, we're going to
can obviously economise on the price if you don't want so much work done on it, but the, the touch is the essential thing to do. But the tone is really, really lush, just as it should be. 30 Steinways are so good. And uh, we can do anything to the piano. We fully restored one recently that was full of moths. So we just did the whole thing. Um, this one, the touch is a bit, a bit light, really, if you want to do serious playing. I, the only way to improve that is to change the hammers. But the hammers aren't bad. They don't really need changing. They need a bit of refacing and livening up here. Lovely tenor. And a beautiful bass tone as well. Up here, lacking in power at the moment, just because it, the hammers need working on. But that can be done without changing them. Thank you for listening.